welcome back to the barley fields of Perthshire in Bonnie, Scotland. The sun is shining. I've been out detecting for an hour and 15 minutes and I'm not going to lie, I've found absolutely nothing. So I wanted to first of all say a huge thank you because I hit 7,000 subscribers which is tremendous. I'm absolutely over the moon, so thank you all for your support. And I thought, why don't I put together a little compilation of some of the best finds that I've had from these fields over the last 12 months or so. So part one is coming up. And who knows, if I go out again and don't find anything else, then maybe I'll put together a part two. So thanks all for the support. And uh, let's have a look at some of our greatest finds. It is a deep one. We're still in here. It doesn't... Oh, wait a second. Do you see that? Oh, I've just collapsed the side of the hole. Do you see that? Is that aluminium? Or aluminium? Let's get out and see. Oh, that could be a bit of stainless steel maybe. Well, it's something metal. How big is it? Oh, there's an edge. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Right. It's rectangular. Square. There we go. It's loose. It is loose. And it is a thing. That's not silver, is it? Whoa. I think that is silver. Some sort of ingot. With decoration. Right. I have had a, uh, I have had two silver ingots off this field in the past. I had one last year. I had one I think maybe four or five years before that, but this is certainly a monster if this is silver. This will be the biggest by far. Okay. That has definitely got decoration. There's a cross. There's a circle. Right, I'm going to have to go and give this a little gentle clean. There's a stream about 100 metres away, so I'm going to go and take it for a wee wash. I think we have got an ancient relic of some description. I don't know, I don't know if it's a bit of something or if it's a bit of what they call hack silver or whether it's port silver or or what I'm trying to stay out the wind because it's howling at the moment hopefully the microphone is doing its trick but look at that it's got it's actually got little uh, it's got a cross there look it's got little almost like flowers in each of the four quarters and then here it's got one, two, it's maybe got three circles. And then dots, there's three dots there, there's single dots, different sizes. And a few gouges out it. Could this be Viking? Do you think? Does that look Viking? or Roman, or Iron Age, or even Medieval, I mean, I don't know, it could be, it could be any of the above. If that's silver, that's, that's got to be two ounces, give or take, which is going to be, what, 28, 28 grams, 56, 28 grams to an ounce, so, I mean, that, that could be, it could be like 50, 60 odd grams there. And that is silver. I think that is silver. It has to be silver. What else could it be? 
it's all tool marked, hammer marked, slightly curved, but then not on that side. I don't know, is that is that some sort of silver ingot? The last one I had had two X's on it, but no flowers, no circles, no dots. I think that could be really old. That could be many hundreds, if not thousands of years old. And if that was Viking, oh, that would be amazing, because I, I don't think I've ever actually found a Viking find before. Right, let me know in the comments. I'm going to have to do a bit of research on this, but I think that could be find of the year so far. And just typical, just as this field's about to be planted and be off limits for for months right let me know in the comments I am made up with that that is fantastic absolutely fantastic Martin with another relic this one though is gold well gold gilded anyway it is some sort of badge if I turn it over it's originally been enamelled. A crown at the top. It looks like maybe two swords going across it. In the centre you can see it just make out E D W A R D V 1 1 Edward the Seventh. So that's Queen Victoria's son and the father of George V. That would put this sometime between 1901 and 1910. So clearly some sort of commemorative badge or brooch, possibly for his um, coronation, which was in 1901. And he died before he made it to 10 years, so it can't be any sort of celebratory. Maybe he got married or something like that. But it's a nice find. I can't say I've had one of them before. It is a very worn you can just make out the word Florin. You can see the three lions of England and the shields opposite one another. You can see the, la the rampant lion of Scotland. And you can see the harp of Ireland. Or Hibernia, as it is often known. And on the other side, Georgius V, by the grace of God, King of the Britons, Defender of the Faith and Emperor of India. So this is the son of Edward the Seventh, who I found not a million miles away from where I'm sitting right now. And he was on the throne from, I think, 1910 until 1936. Well worth a dig. Let's see what we get. It was deeper than I expected with three spadefuls out and do you see what I see in the bottom of the hole? I can see the telltale sign of lead white it's moving there we are I think we might have an ancient relic. I think we've got a spindle whorl. I think we have got a spindle whorl. If there's a hole in the middle, then I think there is, there is, then this could be very old. It could also be decorated, so I'm going to go and give this a gentle clean up in the little stream to the side of me, see if we can see any decoration on it and I'll tell you a little bit about what a spindle whorl is. I took it to a little stream and I gave it a little wash, managed to get most of the mud off it. I can assure you the water is freezing, I'm going to have to put my gloves on in a minute to try and warm my hand up. But it is a spindle whorl and it is decorated. It's got these, what looks like, five circles on the bottom. And it is a little bit damaged, it's a bit misshapen. But you can clearly see 
there's a few lines on there, there's a few dots, pretty much all around it there are dots. And this is probably medieval, but it could even be Roman or Iron Age in date. It's called a spindle whorl. This, but the second part of it is spelt W-H-O-R-L. And this is used for spinning wool, just loose wool off a sheep, into yarn or thread or, you know, woolen strands. So you would mount this on the end of a wooden stick and that would allow you to control the speed better at which you were spinning wool. Sometimes these can be very elaborately decorated. This one, as I say, is a little bit damaged, it's a bit worn, but it is a beauty. I've had a few of these over the years, had a cracker last year. Martin also had another one. I think the museum reckoned it was from the 1300s. So it is probably going to be a similar sort of date. It's probably going to be 13, 1400s, but it could well be earlier. It certainly looks a bit cruder than the other ones. So this one was about four or five inches down. Absolute ear-blowing signal. And uh, this is what it's produced. Now, yesterday, or was it the day before, I thought I'd found some sort of medieval buckle and rightly I think several people suggested they thought it was a a folding pen knife or at least part of the handle this however could be a medieval strap end or buckle could be decorated, I'm not sure. I'm going to need to give this a wee gentle clean up and get back to you. I think we have got some kind of ancient relic. I took a couple of twigs of straw. What I thought was circular decoration was actually perforated. Goes all the way through. So I cleaned the mud out. And there's no sort of really detailed decoration that I can see. But... I think that is very old. See how it's a sort of unusual shape? Even the little notch on the end is not central. It's not right in the middle. I think this is possibly... I hope I'm not wrong again, but I think this could be medieval. I'm not sure, but I think the little dots would have allowed you to rivet it onto a piece of leather, possibly. Like a leather belt or a leather strap. I'm going to stick my neck out and I'm going to say I think that this is medieval. Some sort of strap end or part of a buckle mechanism. If it is, I think it's going to be pretty old. I think it's going to be 12th, 13th, 14th century, something like that. Let me know in the comments. But I think that is find of the day so far. And please, if it turns out to be something that was made... 50 years ago, be gentle. <laughs> but I think that is. I think that is medieval. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, we're out the hole. Not particularly deep, maybe four or five inches. Bit of a nightmare to dig with all this straw. Because of these carrots. Oh, we might have a wee... Might have a wee coin ball. Somewhere in here. Don't see anything obvious. Let's crack it open. Oh, you beauty. We have got a silver coin. Is it hammered or is it milled? It looks thin enough to be hammered, but I don't think it is. I think it is a milled coin. You beauty. Look at that. That is a beauty. I think that's another William of Orange, I think. Givillimus. Can't quite see it's so bright. Um, 
Yep, I think it is. G.V. Gavillimus William. William II of Scotland, also known as William III of England. Peel her open. And there we go. One coin of the silver variety. This is the reverse of the coin. You can just see the number 90. So that would be 1690. And then it says Mag B R F R A et Hib H I B Rex. Translated, if my Latin is any good, that says 1690 Great Britain, France, and Hibernia, Ireland, Rex King. So King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, 1690. And then you've got the coats of arms, you've got the rampant lion of Scotland, you've got the fleur de lis, the flowers of the lily of France. I'm not sure what this one would be. Possibly, possibly England, the three lions of England, and the other one's completely worn away. I forget what the other two shields were, obviously there'd be England. Probably the Stadtholder of Holland, because he was William of Orange. And uh, on this side, Gavillimus 111. So, William the Third. In Scotland, we called him William the Second. Let me turn my pinpointer off. And uh, he was planted as the king during or after the... What's called the Glorious Revolution of 1688, when King James the Seventh of Scotland, who was also known as James the Second of England, just to confuse everyone, he was a Roman Catholic. He was the brother of Charles the Second, and uh, he didn't last very long on the throne. English people, in particular, were not happy that he was not a Protestant. He was a Roman Catholic, and when he produced a son and heir who was to be raised as a Catholic, that was the final straw. James was deposed, fled to France to live with his cousin Louis and uh, began from 1689, began the attempts to restore the Stuarts, the Jacobite rebellions, 1689 all the way through to his grandson in 1746, Bonnie Prince Charlie. And the name Jacobus in Latin means James, so if you were a Jacobite or a Jacobite, you were a supporter of the exiled Stuarts, the Jameses. But that's a beautiful coin from a very important part of Scotland's history. 1690 was the year of the Battle of the Boyne in Northern Ireland, where, or sorry, in Ireland, or was it in Northern Ireland? I can never remember. But um, when the Jacobite forces, largely composed of Irish Catholics, were defeated by King William, King Billy, as he's also known. Beautiful, great coin, not in the best of condition, but you know what, solid silver, and uh, it's been rattling about in this field for a long time, over 300 years. Fantastic. It was a deep one, folks, but I think we've got telltale lead. We have. We've got like a little lead, a little lead lump. Oh, oh wow, that's a bit different. What is that? Look at that. So, what do you reckon to this, folks? It's plain on the back, just smooth on the back. It looks like it's been suspended from something. It's got like a little tag which is broken off on the end. I've had a scout around, there's there's no more bits. But, look at that, what is it? I don't think it's a seal, because it doesn't look like that would transfer onto wax, but then again, maybe it would, I don't know. I've never found a, a sort of seal matrix before. Um, but there's a cross. I don't know, is that like the cross of the Knights Templar? Or the Maltese cross? It looks familiar, but I can't think where I've seen it before. And it has got three dots or pellets in each 
of the four quarters, a bit like a bit like a hammered silver medieval coin. And a little tag is actually not in great condition. It looks like it's about ready to fall off. So I'm not going to touch it because I think it will just crumble. But I think that that could be quite old. If it was anything to do with the Knights Templar, well, the Knights Templar was like the, the Roman Catholic military order. Sometimes just called the Templars. Or sometimes called, I think it was something like Solomon's Soldiers or Solomon's Army. They were founded in the early 1100s, about 1115. And they were disbanded on the orders of the Pope in 1313, I think it was. And their prime aim was to provide safety and escort pilgrims who were travelling to the, the Middle East on on pilgrimages and I think they basically became too powerful for their own good and on the orders of the Pope they were wiped out so what do you think could that be medieval could that be from the the 13th century or the 12th century or maybe even the early 14th century let me know in the comments beautiful thing and it's made of lead if I haven't already said that let me know in the comments I think we've struck silver in that last spade full a look right there probably six inches down you beauty look at that look at that Right, we need to give this a wee gentle clean up and then I'll come back to you. It is a beauty. Givillimus 111. William the Third, by the grace of God. This is King William of Orange, also known as King Billy. In Scotland we called him King William the Second, but in England he was known as King William the Third. And he ruled from 1688 until 1702. I expected it to be deeper. I'm only down four inches, maybe five, but it's saying it's in this plug. Oh, oh, oh. We've got silver. We have got another silver coin. We have, we have got another silver coin, a sixpence, 1920, 1920, so that's going to be George the fifth, again, looks quite shiny, it is, it's in pretty good condition, Georgius the fifth, by the grace of God, king of the Britons. So it is indeed 1926, not 1920, which means it is 50% silver. 1920 is when coins changed from 97% or whatever it was to 50%. And then 1947, I think it was, it was faded out altogether. But it's a silver sixpence, albeit only half silver. And it's George V. So George V should never have been king, his brother, um, Prince Albert Victor, should have been king. But in the 1890s, he died during an influenza pandemic. And that put George V in line to the throne. He eventually became king 1909, 1910, and he ruled until 1936. His brother, interestingly, Victor Albert, was or should I say Prince Albert Victor, was the one that was allegedly Jack the Ripper in London. And later on, George V would marry his brother's fiancée, Mary of Teck. He also changed the family name of the royal family, Saxe-Gotha-Coburg. He changed that to the House of Windsor in 1917 because he was at war 
with his cousin, the Kaiser, Kaiser Wilhelm II. So, nice, beautiful bit of silver, very nice silver. Two spade fills down and we're out the hole, right here somewhere. I think we've got silver. It's not another William, is it? Oh. I'll tell you what, I think that might be a hammered coin. I think that is. I think that is. I think that might be a hammered silver coin. Oh, I don't want to rub it and I don't have my water with me. Right, let's try and peel that off. One handed. There we go. Oh, you beauty. Look at that. I think that's a Charles. Charles the first, maybe? Can't remember if he faces to the left or to the right. Right, we're going to need to go and give this a very, very gentle clean. There's a little stream about 100 metres away to my left. So I'm going to go and give this a little wash. It's hardly a flowing torrent, is it? But it's enough. So, moment of truth. Ow! It's a bramble. <laughs> Let's see what happens. What have we got? It's looking in great condition. Right, that water is cold. Ooh. That water is cold. Right, what have we got? We've got Car, Carolus de Gracia, by the grace of God, Scotland, England, France, et Hibernia, Rex. So Charles the First, by the grace of God, King of Scotland, England, France and Ireland. And uh, I've been joined by the dastardly duo of Paul and Mr. Fletch. Paul and Mr. Fletch. Uh, sorry, Mr. Fletch and Marty. And you little beauty. That is a hammered. <laughs> Words of encouragement from Martin there. And even better, it's a Scottish hammered. Oh, really? Yep. And you can see. A thistle, a Scottish thistle with a crown above it. Salis repubs something. I don't know. Something lex. I've no idea what that means. But that is a hammered silver coin. And it looks like Charles the First to me. Which means it's 1625 to 1649 he got his head chopped off by Oliver Cromwell. So Martin just realised he's still got his gold hammered coin on him from yesterday. Look at that for a find. And to think that they thought it was a milk bottle top or a Lucasade can. I don't know what kind of milk bottles they were drinking out of when they were younger. But Martin is sending this off tomorrow. And the hope is that it's going to be straightened. And uh, we're really hoping that it's going to come back with a king holding a sword standing on a ship with a flag, which is there. That's the top of the flag, we think. And we think it's E for Edward. Should face like that. Edward the Fourth, we think. And we think it's a Flemish issue. 1460s, I think, was the date. Uh, thanks to Cleggy who sent a couple of emails and just trying to help us out with the identification but I've got high hopes that it's going to be in phenomenal condition so you know the detail that you can see looks really really crisp 
So I don't know how long that'll take to turn around, did he say? He didn't say. Didn't say. So we'll see what happens, but either way, I think it's going to look amazing. Martin's just got himself a relic. It's lead. It looks to be plain on the back, but on the other side, there is a cross. And I think this might be some sort of old token or tally. Some people call them field tokens, I think. That could be medieval in date, possibly. Could be many, many, many hundreds of years old. So that's a good find. Any guesses? 13th, 14th, 15th century? Let me know in the comments. Well done, Martin. That last find, which was just there, was indeed a piece of... It was like stainless steel, but it, my God, I, could, I couldn't even bend it. Um, another signal here. Sounds uh, more crisp than the stainless steel, but maybe it's just a bigger piece. Let's see what we get. I think I have got an epic, epic birthday find. Oh, it's been hard going. The soil is so difficult to dig. Uh, I started to make the hole wider and I was pretty certain it's going to be a can. And narrowed it down to there. I was kind of digging in the wrong place. Well, I was started digging just here. And then I came back the way. I'm hoping that I haven't damaged it. Whatever it is. But I think it is a silver coin. Look at that. Look at that. That is a silver coin. Struggling to focus with my finger in the way. Do you see that? And that's big. That is a big coin. Oh, look at the size of that. Oh, ground's so hard. All right, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to uh, turn you off for a second and come back to you. Let me see if I can ease it out the ground with the uh, dig away round the edges with a spade. I'm trying unsuccessfully to wave to Martin in the distance, but he's got his headphones on and he's looking away from me. He's working away from me, but hopefully I'll catch his eye in a minute. And look at that. That is a monster silver coin. I've done it again. Right. Let me sort the zoom out and I'm hoping to God I haven't hit it with a spade, but I don't think I have. Oh, it's a whopper. It's another one. It's another, uh, what was it, a crown? It's another silver crown. That is a monster. That is a monster. Look at this. Look at the thickness of it. This is another ounce of silver. And that is Victoria, I think. Old head. I think that is Victoria. Oh, I can't see her name, but it looks like she's got a. It's, it looks like a, a veil. Try not scratch it. There we go. V I C Victoria. It is. That is a Victoria. Beast. Look at the thickness of that. That is a. That is another one. Ninety something. Eighteen ninety, something. Right, I'm going to try and catch Marty's eye. And when he gets here, wait until he sees this. Happy birthday to me. Marty's taking my coin for a little wash. And just before he did, he's got a coin as well. You can just make out Britannia seated. And a head looking to the right hand side. And this is a big chunky... We're guessing penny. 
and it is, we think, George the Fourth. And he took over from his father before he died in 1820 because he lost his mind. And he ruled until 1830. So he's quite a rare, if I remember rightly, he's quite a rare king. He visited Scotland, famously, in, I think it was 1824 or 1826. And it was a stage managed visit by... Sir Walter Scott actually arranged it all. And he famously wore a kilt down what's now called George the Fourth Street. And it was so short it looked like a miniskirt. And all the locals who were along the street burst out laughing. And he thought they were celebrating the fact that he had come to Edinburgh. When they were in fact laughing at him. But... Let's have a look at my silver coin, which Marty has given a wee wash to. And it's a beauty. Oh, is it damaged on the edge by me? No, it's not. It's just the way it is. Look at that, folks. Victoria de Gracia, Brit Regina Fid Def Ind Imp. Victoria, by the grace of God, Queen of the Britons, Empress of India. And that is a cracker. I'm assuming it must be a crown. It is massive. It feels like it weighs about an ounce. It's a bit damaged on the edges, but I'm sure it's been rattling about in this field for 230-something years. you got George and the dragon on the reverse. George slaying the dragon. So he was born in modern-day Turkey. And he became the Saint of England, Saint George, I think in the 13th century. And he's not even English. And along the edge there is writing as well, but it's quite worn. It definitely says Anno, A-double-N-O. And there is L-V-I-I-I, I think that says. L-V-I-I-I, possibly. Which I think will be the year that she was in of her reign it's a bit damaged on the edges but that's not me that's just bouncing about in a ploughed field but that is a monster of a coin an absolute monster that's two silver crowns that I've had in six weeks eight weeks maybe so that is fantastic they must have had a lot of bloody money around here when they were working in the fields I can't remember what a crown was worth. Um, my head's all over the shop. But that is a monster of a silver coin. Absolute monster. Fantastic.